Good morning. Can I remind members of the COVID-related measures that are in place and that face coverings should be worn when moving around the Chamber and across the Holyrood campus? The first item of business is general questions. In order to get in as many people as possible, I'd be grateful for short and succinct questions and responses. And at question number one, I call Mercedes Vialba. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to improve the provision of GP services in the North East region. Cabinet Secretary Hamza Youssef. The Scottish Government is committed to ensuring access to GP services across Scotland, uh, which is why we have pledged increasing the number of GPs by at least 800 by 2027. There are, are currently a record 5,195 GPs working in Scotland, uh, an increase of 74 from 2020. The Scottish Government offers a wide range of initiatives in Scotland to attract GPs to rural settings in particular, including golden hellos, bursaries for newly qualified GPs to take up posts in hard-to-fill rural locations. We established a graduate entry medicine programme focusing on general practice and rural working. We pay tuition fees for eligible students. We, also, uh, we will also expand the Rediscover the Joy recruitment initiative to the North East in 2022. Mercedes Vialba. The provision of GP services in Aberdeen is coming under increasing strain due to six of the city's publicly run medical practices being put out to tender for private contract. I understand that Scottish ministers are unable to intervene in the arrangements for individual practices, but the minister has also already informed me that he does expect satisfactory systems to be in place for the benefit of all patients. So given that an external investigation has upheld complaints from campaigners about the tendering process of old Aberdeen medical practice, will the minister now ask the Health and Social Care Partnership to pause the tendering process so that a full independent review of the process can be undertaken? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can, can I say that I recognise that Ms uh, Villas Alba has raised this issue on a number of occasions and uh, I know other members have got concerns and understandably uh, so, uh, but uh, I would not be asking the Health and Social Care Partnership uh, to pause the tending process, because I would be doing exactly what I don't, what, what, what she recognised I shouldn't do, which is intervening in a local decision making. What I will do in relation to uh, the independent uh, review that she states, I will raise the issue again, uh, of course, with colleagues uh, in Grampian, but also uh, ask my colleagues to raise it uh, with the local health and social care partnership. But I do know, uh, with the tendering uh, of these, uh, the, the recent tendering that has taken place. Uh, that the, the, the needs of patients, the needs of the local community uh, have been put uh, front uh, and uh, centre for a more sustainable model of GP practice going forward. Liam Kerr. Uh, thank you, President Officer. In early December, I asked about Carden Medical Centre in Aberdeen, which is closing due to the Government's failure to carry out workforce planning and to train and recruit GPs. Now, true to form, the Cabinet Secretary evaded my question, so I ask again. When precisely does the Cabinet Secretary project that the North East will have enough GPs to run the services that the people of Aberdeen need and deserve? Cabinet Secretary. He's in incorrect in his assertion, of course, because Scotland has more GPs per head, per 100,000, than any other part of the UK. Not by a margin, not just slightly, but significantly more. Uh, 94 per 100,000 in Scotland compared to 76 per 100,000 in England. So we are investing. We have record numbers of GPs. We're continuing to recruit. In terms of uh, patients in relation to the medical practice he references, Cardin Medical Centre, is my understanding that patients will automatically be registered uh, and have been at this stage registered to a new practice. There are nine practices within a mile radius of Cardin Medical Centre and a total of 27 practices in the Aberdeen City area. So the needs of patients are being put first and foremost. But what I would say to uh, Liam Kerr is the reason why we have such a good record uh, in, in GP recruitment and GP retention uh, is because we invest in our GPs. And I'm sure that's why the Scottish public have chosen to re-elect us for a fourth term and he continues in opposition. Question number two, Jenny Minto. Thank you, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to improve awareness of mental health. Minister Kevin Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer, uh, the Scottish Government has highlighted the importance of mental health and wellbeing and provided a range of advice and support through the Clear Your Head radio, television and online campaign, through NHS Inform and via Young Scots I Feel platform. 
In addition, our mental health transition and recovery plan includes a range of wider actions to support and promote good mental health and well-being in response to the pandemic. Uh, these include providing long-term funding for CME, Scotland's campaign to end the stigma and discrimination associated with mental illness, working with employer groups, trade unions and mental health organisations to promote mentally, mentally healthy workplaces, launching a £15 million communities fund to support adult mental health and wellbeing in communities across Scotland, and working with partners to provide a range of resources to meet the needs of children and young people, including over 200 new community support services. Jenny Minto. I thank the Minister for that answer. Next Monday, the 17th of January, Samaritans will hold their yearly event, Hashtag Brew Monday, to remind everyone to reach out for a cuppa and a catch-up with the people they care about. Would the Minister join me in supporting this event, which can also be carried out virtually? Minister. Um, thank you, President Officer, and I certainly uh, join Ms uh, Minto in her support for uh, the S Samaritans. Um, I greatly value the important work of the Samaritans and am delighted to support their uh, Brew Monday event. Um, this is really important. I recognise that January, January can be a difficult time uh, of year for lots of people at the best of times. Uh, but we all have our good days and bad days. But there's always a sense that the short days, the poor weather and the end of the festive season can have an impact. And we should all come together uh, to help one another um, through that. Um, and I applaud the Samaritans for their efforts in these regards. And I would urge every member uh, to support the Brew Monday event. Carol Mockin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. At Tuesday's Health, Social Care and Sports Committee, a leading occupational therapist, Suzanne Shields, called on parliamentarians to, and I quote, give children and families access to free physical and leisure activities with support in place. Does the Minister agree this is a key area that the Scottish Government has to focus on as an immediate priority in relation to mental health policy? And what assurances can he give to the many children and families today for whom physical and leisure activities are either too expensive or often far away? Minister. Um, thank you, President Officer. And I believe that uh, play uh, and physical activity is extremely important uh, in ensuring folks' mental well-being. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why, for example, the government in its manifesto uh, had a commitment uh, to put resources uh, into play parks, for example. Um, I recognise what uh, Ms Mockin is saying around about um, costs in terms of accessing leisure activities. Um, but as Ms Mochan is aware, um, many of uh, the responsibilities in terms of those charges rest with local authorities. I would encourage local authorities in their budgeting process uh, to look at what offers they can make to those families uh, that may find difficulty in accessing these services. I know that that happens in many parts of the country. I would encourage those local authorities that don't have such schemes uh, to have a look at that as we move forward. Question number three, Neil Gray. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support and treatment is available for people diagnosed with phenylketonuria. Minister Marie Todd. The Inherited Metabolic Disorders um, Service for Adults and Paediatrics is a National Commission specialist service working out of sites in both NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde and NHS Lothian. This service is available to all IMD patients in NHS Scotland, including those with conditions such as phenylketonuria. The service aims to improve life expectancy, quality of life and provides diagnosis, as well as advice and treatment to manage and control symptoms. Most people will require lifelong follow-up and support from the specialist service. Neil Gray. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Minister for that answer. For an adult or child with PKU, even the smallest amount of protein in their diet can have a major impact, and prolonged exposure can lead to brain damage. Right now, my constituents are having to follow the most restrictive diet you can imagine, which means cutting out foods you would not have thought even contain any protein. Generic versions of the drug saproptarin are now available, which could transform the lives of people eligible with PKU in Airdrie Shots and across Scotland by reducing the need to restrict their diet. Now, as generic versions cut the cost of supplying subtopterin, which had previously been a barrier to Kuvan, can the Minister advise whether the Scottish Government will, in principle, support PKU patients 
seeking SIP proctoring prescriptions on the NHS in Scotland? Minister. Scottish Minister's policy priority is to increase access to medicines, particularly in relation to those for rare, very rare and end of life conditions. Due to Scottish Government reforms and investments in recent years, we have significantly increased access to new medicines. Um, the member is correct. The first generic ver version of saproptyrin has received a marketing authorisation from the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, the MHRA, to ensure best value for NHS Scotland. NSS National Procurement will shortly be tendering for the future supply of saproptyrin to NHS Scotland. Given the launch of the first generic, we are currently considering how best to provide advice to health boards on whether saproptyrin should be made available for routine use in NHS Scotland based on the latest available evidence. Question number four, Fulton MacGregor. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it has taken to encourage people who are able to donate blood, particularly during the winter period and ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Minister Marie Todd. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank blood donors for continuing to come forward um, over the particularly difficult winter period in spite of the ongoing pandemic. This has meant that the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service has been able to provide enough blood to meet the needs of patients. And although the, the situation can be volatile, so I would encourage um, those who can donate blood to continue to do SNBTS has well developed plans in place to ensure it has sufficient donors, and there have been successful radio, television and media campaigns over the festive period to encourage donations. Fulton McGregor. Yeah, I thank the Minister for that response, I, and also for a positive response to my members' debate on this very subject yesterday, and would echo her calls to encourage people uh, to give blood if they haven't for a while, or if they have never given blood before. But given the importance of donating blood to the wider NHS, and the fact that the number of donors did drop during the first year of the pandemic, Will the government commit to considering what more it can do to increase the number of active blood donors, including, for instance, encouraging workplace schemes allowing employees time off to donate blood? Minister. So I know that SMBTS is already doing good work with many organisations to highlight the need for blood donors, but I am very happy to look at what the Scottish Government can do to support that. Thank you. Paul O'Kane. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I was delighted to participate in Fulton McGregor's debate on this topic last night, and indeed to raise the fact that last year, uh, historically, we removed the ban in Scotland on uh, gay men and bisexual men uh, donating blood, which has opened up a whole new uh, range of people being able to donate. Can I ask the Minister what she is doing to promote that amongst uh, communities, so that people who may think that that stigmatised rule still exists can be told that it does not, and they can become blood donors? Minister. So I, I thank again Paul O'Kane for raising this issue. It is indeed a wonderful step forward that the range of people who were able to donate blood was widened. And we spoke last night in the debate about what a, a, a fabulous experience that is for so many who have been denied that opportunity to help their communities by giving blood um, so far. I'm more than happy to, I mean, my impression is that, that most people who are affected by that change in rules know well about it. Um, I know my predecessor, Joe Fitzpatrick, had worked hard to raise the, the issue and profile um, before it became before the, the regulations changed, but I'm more than happy to look again and see if there is anything else that we can do to help raise awareness of that change. It is indeed um, a wonderful step forward in reducing stigma. Question number five, Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its responses to the latest Figures showing that recorded hate crimes against members of the LGBT plus community have risen for five years in a row. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robison. Any form of hate crime towards our LGBTI communities is completely unacceptable. And whilst the rise in recorded hate crimes may be driven by the willingness of victims to report incidents, we are certainly not complacent and remain committed to building inclusive communities. We are providing over £3 million of funding between 2021 and 2024 to tackle inequality and realise rights for LGBTI people. 
A recent report shows the progress we and partners have made in tackling prejudice and fostering community cohesion. And we'll continue uh, work with stakeholders to co-create a new hate crime strategy to guide how we tackle hatred and prejudice in Scotland. Jamie Green. Uh, I do share the Cabinet Secretary's sentiment. There's simply no place for intolerance and hatred of this nature in Scotland. But with more than 7,500 incidents of this reported since 2014, the picture is often quite grim for many in Scotland's LGBTI community. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she will personally uh, commit to undertaking analysis of what are the underlying causes of this stark rise? Is it a rise in verbal or online abuse, or a rise worse of physical attacks? And what is the Scottish Government doing to ensure that there are trained LGBTI liaison officers in Police Scotland in all parts of Scotland to support the victims of these horrid crimes? Cabinet Secretary. I am certainly uh, more than willing to undertake that and get back to the member. Um, Police Scotland are, of course, members of the Hate Crime Strategic Partnership Group, and they are actively uh, involved in the development and implementation of the new hate crime strategy, together with other stakeholders. And uh, We are certainly committed to, to uh, understanding uh, the, the, the causes and uh, making sure that we fully uh, respond uh, to that. We know that hate crime, including sexual orientation related hate crime, remains significantly underreported, and it is highly uh, unlikely that these figures will reflect the, the true experience of the community. So, involving stakeholders in developing our new hate crime strategy, I think, will help uh, to tackle. Um, very many of the, 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 the barriers faced by communities to report incidents. Um, but I'm happy to get back to the member on the specifics of, of what he asked. Question number six, Rachel Hamilton. Scottish Government, what action it is taking to support small rural businesses? Minister Ivan McKee. Uh, our enterprise agencies and business gateway provide a range of advice and funding to small rural businesses. In addition, we are providing £375 million of funding to businesses impacted by the current additional public health measures targeted at the hardest hit sectors. We are working to make payments to affected businesses as soon as possible. Information on the support available to businesses is uh, on, available on the Find Business Support website, which is updated daily. Rachel Hamilton. I thank the Minister for the answer. The SNP are set to put a wrecking ball through the rural short-term let industry with a licensing scheme. Organisations have quit the SNP government's working group, and in a recent parliamentary survey, over 60 per cent said it will drive up costs for small short-term let businesses. Rural organisations such as the ASSC, Scottish Agritourism and the NFUS have all voiced their concerns over the impact of this reckless scheme. Minister. Isn't it time the SNP stood up for the rural businesses in Scotland? Minister. Uh, we, we do stand up for rural businesses across Scotland, absolutely. We do and have outlined um, the steps that we are taking uh, to support businesses through the current difficult situation and beyond that. And on the specific question of short term lets, um, the licensing scheme seeks to ensure that every short term let across Scotland meets basic safety standards. And I'm sure the member will agree on the importance of that. This is important in urban and rural areas and for businesses large and small. And our pr proposals deliver national consistency on safety standards while giving local authorities flexibility to tailor the scheme to their local needs. Um, residents in some areas continue to see issues from short term lets and it's right that we are taking proportionate action to give local authorities uh, the, 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 the ability to take, take measures um, in, this, uh, in this regard. I have met with uh, many of the organisations uh, that, that the member mentions to uh, uh, listen to their concerns. We have addressed some of these concerns in the legislation that uh, my colleague Shura Robson is taking forward, but we believe this is the right measure for all the reasons I have indicated. Um, regrettably, due to time, I cannot take any further questions in this session, so we will move on to First Minister's questions.